Hello and welcome. This is a video guide on how to optimize and boost the FPS for Elden Ring. And yes, there are certainly some problems with performance on PC. Hopefully this guide will mitigate some of those issues for you. I'd very much like to point out the guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with much more effectiveness. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve game quality and system performance. And in turn, this will help fix any lag or FPS drops or stutters that you could be experiencing while playing Elden Ring. But first and foremost, we'll go over the very best tips, tricks, and settings for gaming on Windows 10 step by step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step one, clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game. Or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step two, to ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the NVIDIA GeForce overlay, open up NVIDIA GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay. For Xbox Game Bar, using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four. Navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on. And if it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once that's done, navigate down to graphics performance preference and you'll want to add Elden Ring to your graphics performance list. In order for you to do this, you will need to know exactly where the game is installed and you will need to add the games launch application to the list. So to do this, open up Steam, go to your library, right click on Elden Ring, click on properties, then click local files and then browse. What you then want to do is copy the directory link, which is where your game is installed. You can then close Steam, navigate back to your graphic settings window, click browse and you will want to paste the link to the address bar at the top. Then you hit enter and then you will be able to find the application icon for Elden Ring and you simply click add and it will be added to your graphics list. Finally, all you need to do is click on options and then ensure that you set it to high performance, then click save and then you're done. Step five. Go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in Power Plan and click Edit Power Plan. At the very top, click 
power options and under preferred plans ensure high performance is selected. Step 6. If you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step 7. Background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon. Then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off let apps run in the background. Step 8. The Windows Registry Edit Now this step may look a little daunting, but it really isn't, I promise. Just follow along and you're going to be 100% just fine. First, just head on over to the Windows search bar. Type in Run and hit Enter. Once the new window opens up, simply type in Reg Edit, as you see on screen, and hit Enter once again. You're now inside the Windows Registry Editor. In here, we're going to optimize and tweak a couple of values that will set important Windows registry keys to completely prioritize gaming above all else. This includes your CPU resources. So start off by double clicking H key local machine, then double click software, then find the Microsoft folder and once again double click it. Then scroll down until you find Windows NT and you guessed it, double click that. Then double click the current version folder and finally scroll down until you find the multimedia folder and double click that one. You'll now be seeing a folder called System Profile and I want you to just click that one once. Now to the right, you will see two options inside. One is titled Network Throttling Index and the other is titled System Responsiveness. Starting with Network Throttling, I want you to double click it and delete any value you see in there. And and then you proceed to type in eight F's, as in F, 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 F. And this will actually disable network throttling completely, which is extremely beneficial for gaming. Now, once that's done, click OK and exit. Next up, double click on system responsiveness and change the value to zero. This will actually ensure all your CPU resources go towards gaming. And once you've edited the values inside these two registries, head back over to the left and double click on system profile. Then double click on tasks and then click the games folder just once. Head over to the right and double click on GPU priority and set the value data to eight. You then click OK. Next up, double click priority and change the value to 6 and click OK. Finally, double click on scheduling category and change the value data to high if it wasn't already and click on OK. You have now successfully optimized the Windows registry for gaming. Step number 9. Clearing out your temp folder. This is a pretty simple step and it will clear away a huge amount of unnecessary dumped files that are just simply cluttering your machine. Firstly, head down to the Windows search bar and type in percent app data percent and hit enter. Once the window pops up, you will need to ensure that your hidden items are actually showing as this is a hidden folder. To do that, all you need to do is click on view at the top and then tick the box to the right that says hidden items. Once you've done that, click app data on the address bar and you will see a sort of transparent folder called local. Double click on it and then scroll all the way down until you find another transparent folder that's called temp. Once inside here, you'll want to click and drag your mouse to highlight every single file inside the folder. Then just right click on your mouse and select delete. A window will pop up and what you simply need to do is tick the box that says do this for all current items and then click skip and keep doing the same until the process is finished and you're only actually left with the files that are actually being used by your machine inside the folder. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the game and we're going to change a couple of things. Now, with pretty much any game, we can, of course, just put everything on low and that would be fine. You'll get smooth performance for the most part with Elden Ring, but the visual quality would just be quite poor. So the whole point is really to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst we can squeeze out the very most amount of FPS and performance from our PCs. So that's exactly what we aim to try and do with this guy. So firstly, under system, let's head into graphics. In here, ensure that you set screen mode to full screen as per usual. However, I have noticed with Elden Ring that borderless windowed actually works quite well as well. For resolution, you should be using your monitor's native resolution. 
Mine is 1440p, so it's set, of course, to 2560 by 1440. I recommend leaving Auto Detect Best Rendering Settings on. And finally, let's head into Advanced Settings. Starting with texture quality, I'd say for a balanced experience in performance and quality, you should set that to medium. For anti-aliasing quality, low is best. For SSAO, we're going with medium. Both depth of field and motion blur should be switched off. Shadow quality can be set to low. You'll almost immediately feel smoother gameplay. Lighting quality can be set to medium or even high. Effects quality should be on medium. Volumetric quality can be set to either low or medium. Reflection quality should be on medium. For water quality, I'd always go with low, but I guess on this one, it's really down to personal preference. If you're not bothered whether the water looks good or not, I say go with low for better performance. Shader quality should be on medium. Global illumination should be on either medium or high. And finally, grass quality can be either low or medium. As I mentioned before, From Software should be releasing performance patches for PC pretty soon, and hopefully that will fix a lot of the issues the game currently has. In the meantime, hopefully these settings will be sufficient to get you playing with better performance. Now of course these settings do really depend on your PC, so definitely play around and see what works best for your system. I truly, truly hope this guide helps you in some way or another. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching. See you all soon. A goodbye.